Hi, it's Jace from DrPreMed.com. Are you a pre-med student who's getting ready for the MCAT, the biggest test of your life? This is a make or break test that's gonna decide whether you get in medical school or not and become a doctor. Unfortunately for a lot of students preparing for this exam, you just don't know what you're up against. Did you know that every year, thousands and thousands of pre-med students take the MCAT, but don't get a passing score? Now, obviously you can't fail the MCAT, but you just get a score that's not good enough to get into medical school. Did you know that 60% of first-time applicants are rejected from medical school? And a number one reason why they're rejected is based on your MCAT score and a little bit more data and statistics for you to help you out. For everybody who applies to medical school, the average MCAT score is a 501, but everybody who applies and gets into medical school, it's a 508. So obviously, you need to do better than 508 if you want to have a fighting chance of getting into medical school. And I have to tell you how ADCOMs do admissions for students. They have way too many applicants applying than they can possibly review. For instance, in schools like Georgetown, George Washington University, Harvard, and some of the other top schools, they receive over 10,000 applications. Yep, you heard that correct, 10,000 applications. So how are they going to screen all of those applicants and decide who they're going to admit? They're going to use a computer, a computer where they plug in MCAT scores and GPAs, and if you don't meet the minimum cutoff for them, you're automatically rejected before a human ever sees any part of your application. So that means all your volunteering, your extracurricular activities, everything that you were doing over the past two to three years to make yourself a competitive applicant for medical school has just went out the window. Obviously, you don't want this to happen to you. I'm sure you want to be a doctor. Maybe mom or dad wants you to be a doctor or other relatives, and or maybe that's just what you thought from a young age, that you wanted to go into medicine, you want to help people, you want to save lives, and you want to do all of those noble things that comes with becoming a doctor. But the biggest hurdle standing between you and medical school right now is actually your MCAT score. And so what can you do to improve your chance of getting into medical school? school. Now, if you're like most pre-med students, you know there's a lot of work involved with getting into medical school, in particular with the MCAT. So what are you going to do? You're going to focus on taking a review course, a content review course, to learn everything that you need to learn to do well in the MCAT. And so where do most students turn? They're going to turn to Princeton Review. They're going to turn to Kaplan. They're going to turn to Next Step Test Prep. They're going to turn to Exam Crackers. They're going to turn to Berkeley Review. So you have all these commercial MCAT test prep course programs that are available to you. And I don't knock those programs. I think they're great. They're going to teach you the basic science and content that you need to learn to do well in the MCAT. But unfortunately, what happens for a lot of students is they get into these cookie cutter classes, courses, they're going over the material, and they're studying their hearts out, doing all the lectures, doing all the problems but they're not making progress. What's happening is they're in this course, they're doing all this work, and they're not making progress. And so what happens is when it's time for them to actually take the MCAT, their scores aren't improving, or they actually go and sit for the real MCAT and they score only a 490. That's not going to cut it. Even everybody who applies in medical school doesn't have a 490. They're at least a 501. So then you're in a huge hole where the computer might not even look at you because your score is just way too low to get into medical school. So what are you going to do? Most students are going to pan they're going to think, okay, I need to study harder. I need to do more problems. I need to spend more time reading. But that's not how you improve your MCAT score. What you need to do is have a system in place where you can get the most bang for your buck in the least amount of time possible and see the highest improvement in your score. And I bring that to you with my MCAT Mastery Companion course that I developed specifically for pre-med students after seeing so many kids go through these commercial MCAT prep courses and struggling with the material. So my course 
is unlike anything you've ever seen before. I actually tell you with my MCAT Mastery Companion course that you're supposed to use it with one of those other commercial prep courses because I'm not gonna keep teach you the science. You already have Kaplan, you already have the Princeton Review, you already have exam crackers. They're experts in teaching you the science, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna teach you the high yield test taking strategies and study skills that you need to see your score zoom to the top so you can get out of the 490s and get in the 500 closer to 508 wherever you need to be so it doesn't matter where your starting point is my program's guaranteed to see score improvement for you and how that works is i teach you how to think like a doctor because the MCAT is a test to see how you think like a doctor. Put yourself in the shoes of what you're actually gonna be doing for the rest of your career as a physician. I like to use an analogy of you're an ER doctor and what happens? Somebody comes into the hospital and they can either talk to you or maybe they're unconscious and they can't talk. What is your job as a doctor? The first thing you have to do as a doctor is prevent them from dying. So you have to figure out what's the thing that can kill my patient right now and you have to make sure that doesn't happen. Then from there, you have to figure out what most likely is going on with my patient and this is what we call making our differential diagnosis, what we think is most likely going on with the patient and working our way down to what we think is not most likely. And so how are you gonna to get to that information? You're gonna take a history. Basically, this is where you interview the patient, ask some questions trying to figure out what's going on. And then after you take a history, you're gonna do a physical exam to see what other physical findings there are. And once you have the physical finding history, then you're gonna order labs and other imaging studies that are available to you to figure out what's going on with this patient and come up with your di diagnosis and your treatment plan for the patient. That's what you do in medicine. Obviously, this isn't memorization where you just regurgitate facts and just memorize everything in a book. Obviously, there's certain things that you have to memorize, like certain lab values and what they mean, but that's what you're going to do for the rest of your life as a doctor. You have to, this isn't a cla classic textbook scenario where you just walk in and everything fits into a perfect picture and scenario. It just doesn't work that way. And that's the job of the MCAT. The MCAT is a test to see, can you think like a doctor? Do you have the aptitude to think outside the box, to take all these disparate pieces of information and come up with what you think is going on with this patient? And unfortunately, in your pre-med classes, that hasn't taken place. For you to do well in a pre-med student, all you have to do is read the material, do the problems, have a general understanding of it, and you do well on your exams. You might not get an A or be at the top of the class, but you're most likely going to pass. And then students are shocked when they're trying to use this philosophy while they're applying for, while they're studying for the MCAT, where they thought all they had to do was put in the work and they would have the success that they want. And unfortunately, it doesn't happen for them because the MCAT's a thinking test. And why? how you know it's a thinking test is, is I tell students, when you're studying for the MCAT, there's a reason why there's so many charts, graphs, experiments on the MCAT, because it's something that they can put all these unknowns on that exam, and they want to see, do you have critical thinking? Do you have analytical skills? Can you apply basic foundational concepts to novel problems that you've never seen before? And if you're able to do that, then you're able to get a good score on the MCAT, a top score that's going to open up doors for you and get you into the top choice medical schools that you want to get into because ADCOMS, the number one factor that they use for deciding who gets into medical school is going to be based on your MCAT. So you need to do well in the MCAT. And I like to tell students that my MCAT Mastery Companion course is basically me tutoring you through a video course. The whole my course is based on video, and what I do is I give you the most high-yield test-taking study strategies and tips that you can apply immediately. So if you need that tutoring, if you need that boost, then you're going to definitely enjoy the MCAT Master Companion course. It's about three hours of video time, but then there's also eBooks, worksheets, cheat sheets, air analysis worksheets, everything that you need to apply to get yourself where you need for a top MCAT score. 
And again, you can use it with your Kaplan, your Princeton Review, your exam crackers, your next step test prep. And the overall goal is to help you think like a doctor and apply all of the science knowledge, um, your car section. I know a lot of students struggle with that. I have a section for cars in there, but I want to see you excel. I want to see you boost your MCAT score and move up a couple of percentiles where you know that you're confident when you walk into the MCAT that you have everything that you need to excel on the test. So if you want to get ahead and outshine the competition and make sure you're doing everything that you can to get into medical school, then I strongly encourage you to check out my MCAT Master Companion course because it was built for you, the pre-med student who might be at the 490 MCAT, who needs to get to a 508 or better, and everything that you've done in the past hasn't worked, but you really, really want to be in a medical school, and you know the MCAT's the final hurdle standing between you and your acceptance, where your family, your friends are going to be so proud of you when you can finally say, I beat the MCAT, I did everything, and a few short months, I'm going to be medical school, I'm going to be shaking the dean's hand as I receive my white coat and progress in my career as a medical student, ultimately becoming a doctor. So if this is you, if you want this chance, if you want to be successful, you worked so hard all over over the previous years, then you need my MCAT Master Companion course. There's not much else I can tell you. It's competitive to get into medical school. Either you realize you want to be a doctor or you don't and you're going to do everything you can to make sure that's a reality for you. And I already did the hard lifting for you. I went through this course painstakingly, detailed detail by detail, recorded all of these excellent videos, spoke to top um, physicians, educators, tutors, and put everything together for you. So if you're the student who's a couple weeks out from your exam and you're looking at your school report and you're not where you need to be, then the MCAT Master Companion course is for you. Or maybe you're the student who's just getting started with the MCAT and you don't want to waste time. You want to get in there and you want to see results and success right away then you need the MCAT Master Companion course too. Basically, wherever you are, you need the MCAT Master Companion course because it's going to lay the foundation on how you can excel on the MCAT and its tools, strategies, and tips that I apply in the MCAT Master Companion course is something that you can not only use for the MCAT, but in your pre-med courses and also while you're in medical school. So this is going to just make life so much easy for you going forward because medicine's difficult, it's hard, it takes a lot of work, but you want to have somebody who's been there through the process. I'm currently a fourth-year medical student. I've taken my boards, so I know everything that you need to go through to get to where you need to be to become a doctor. And I use all my previous knowledge and experiences on boards, taking the MCAT, standardized exams and put that all together for you so you can have your best chance of success. I look forward to seeing you on the inside with my MCAT Master Companion course and helping you get to the next stage of your career, which is getting into medical school. And it all begins with the MCAT. And as my mentor from the University of Chicago, who's an MD, PhD, who um, sat at the admissions committee sa said, he goes, the MCAT's a test that you want to take once and only once. And with my MCAT Master Companion course, that's going to happen for you.